not shout. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. The container ships aren't making it tonight. What do you think, folks? Nah, don't worry. I'm not giving up my day job. And welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And let's have a little quick little chat here about what's really going on out here in this country. What the real pandemic is in this country. The real pandemic in this country is all those container ships that are setting off the west coast of California over there that are loaded with all the goods that all need to be transported across this country that aren't going to make it here in time for Christmas. And if they do, the prices of the stuff that's in those containers is going up as we speak. We really are seeing some really significant rises in, in food prices. Jason Lusk is a food economist. He sees firsthand at the grocery store how much more expensive everyday items are. What's happening? Grocery prices skyrocketed when the pandemic hit and never really came back down. Feed and grain are also costing farmers more, and those costs end up being passed down to shoppers. Demand for you know, meat, fish products has been surprisingly strong. Among the most expensive items right now, rice, milk, oranges, and coffee. Americans on average spend about 10% of their income on food, but... It has really disproportionate impacts across our economy. Food price increases hit the lower end of the socioeconomic spectrum much harder. You don't believe me? It's the truth, folks. Do your homework. On this video here today, I'm going to be showing you some video clips here in a few minutes of some of the news agencies that have been covering that whole scenario out there. And some of the stuff that you're going to hear might just blow your mind in case you don't really pay attention too much to the news. Because I know a lot of people out there, especially preppers, they don't really watch too much news and anything else. All right. I did go online. I found some of these clips and stuff, and I want to make sure that I show and share these with you. So this way here, you totally understand why Santa Claus is going to have a real hard time this year. And while all this is still going on, folks, why it's putting a whole strain on all the shortages from electronics and food and everything else. Now I am a delivery guy. All right. I deliver goods to just about anybody and everybody. So the way it works is, is when I go in these stores, I have a very good rapport with my customers. Now, all my cell phone stores and everything else, they have a shit ton of accessories. Now, what good is accessories if you don't have the phones to go with them, correct? I mean, it's just the way the business goes. And then you have their bosses that are coming down on them because their sales are down. Well, how do you expect these guys and these women to make their sales and make the profit they're supposed to on a daily basis because they all have margarines, all right? if they don't have phones to sell. So get off their backs. Come on, people. A little common sense goes a long way, don't you think? You walk into the GameStop, all right? GameStop is, a, for those of you who don't know, GameStop is a big retail store here in America, and it sells a lot of games, electronic games, computer games, you know, PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox, all that kind of stuff. They don't have anything to sell. They have used games. They may have some new games and stuff. But if you can't buy the system, what well, good is the games? Go figure. And then you have all these pirates out there. That's what I like to call them people. It's pirates. All right. And they're there to capitalize on everybody else's suffering. Because what they do is, if they find a deal or they find where a store is getting some of these things and stuff, they'll go in there and they'll buy two or three of these. They'll buy two or three iPhones. They'll buy two or three PlayStation 5s. They'll buy this kind of stuff, turn around, throw it out there online for triple the price, and laugh all the way to the bank while you're broke because you just paid triple the price because you don't want to wait or you want to make sure that you have that PlayStation 5 for little Johnny when he wakes up on Christmas morning. Okay, I get it. Everybody wants to make sure that their kids have a good Christmas and everything else, but you have to draw a line somewhere, folks. You're throwing yourself in debt over what? All these containers are sitting out there. There's Some of these ships hold thousands and thousands and thousands of containers. Shouts. To truly understand the supply chain logjam, Nobody knew who we were. Longshoremen, what is that? You have to start at the docks. 
Ramon Ponce de Leon represents the 14,000 longshoremen at the ports of LA and Long Beach. Because there is no space in the yard, there's not that much we can offload. You have nowhere to put the containers when they come off the ship. That's correct. That's because containers still waiting to be picked up are taking valuable space. This massive cargo ship holds about 5,000 containers. Normally, there'd be four to five cranes just like this one, unloading as fast as possible. But today, there are only two. Crane operator Ricky McRae makes the daily ascent to his cab 14 stories up, but he says his container count is down more than 20%. When people say, why aren't the dock workers moving faster? What are you thinking? Oh, right away, I feel like I'm the bad guy, first of all, but hey, I tell him we're doing our part, we're doing our best. He could easily unload faster if there were somewhere to put the containers. Why aren't there? Now, as you see, I mean, this stuff is just phenomenal, folks. Can you imagine what is really taking place out there? And what is the government doing? You know, the government sets back and they want 24-7. Now, I've talked about this in another video. They want 24-7 running the ports. Here's the problem. Between 3 and 8 a.m. in the morning, all right, the port is still open because they got them on 24-7, okay? But the warehouses and truck drivers aren't running. It's just it's amazing, which means they're not unloading anything. So they're paying these people these longshoremen, and they make pretty good money. They're paying them to be there. They can't do nothing. So whoever is working the midnight shift till, say, 7 in the morning or whatever, you got it made in the chain after 3. Guess that's one heck of a long coffee break. Did you get what I'm saying? It's not their fault. Blame the government. Now, the government is trying to lift certain restrictions on age groups that can drive trucks and cross state lines. Because right now, you have to be 21 years of older if you want to cross state lines as a truck driver. You can drive in state, but you can't cross state lines. And now they're lowering that to 18. So now if you're 18 years old and older and you have your license and everything else, and now you are allowed to cross state lines. But still, the question stands. When these trucks and stuff pull into the, some of these ports, they're not there just to pick up a container that's coming right off that ship. They're there to pick up that container that's buried in the middle out there, folks. Buried in the middle. It might be the term of 2021. Logistic experts and academics like Umzel's George Sedition have been keeping an eye on the supply chain for years. But now, with unprecedented shipping disruptions and rising cost of goods hitting our wallets, the term is mainstream. So when COVID uh, hit, it completely changed uh, really the way that we think about supply chain. Zedition says you can't point to one reason for the supply chain chaos. It's being described as the perfect storm. Higher demand, lulls in production due to COVID shutdowns, labor shortages, trade and tariff issues, all playing a part. The bottlenecks helping drive up inflation, the highest year to year spike in more than 30 years. The containers. Why aren't there trucks lined up for miles to pick up all this stuff and get it out of here? I suppose they don't have a place to put it because the container has become the warehouse with just-in-time delivery. Just-in-time delivery is a cost-cutting strategy to import merchandise only as needed, reducing warehouse space. But that backfired with pandemic shutdowns. You may think these trucks line up and pick up the first load available. That is not the case. They are here for specific containers and sometimes they're in the middle of the pile. It's like a giant game of Jenga. Move four containers to get to one on the bottom. Is that common? Yes, it's very common. Just for one container? Yes. And this year, dock workers expect to move a record 20 million containers through these ports. We have... Now, as you guys saw there, what in the world? I mean, come on. That's like pulling in there and, you know, it's like, okay, I'm here for container number 29. Yeah, the one in the middle over there on the bottom. Three hours later, they're finally loading it on a truck to pull it out of there while all these other containers are just sitting there. The trains are just piled up. It's just a mess. That is the pandemic, folks. The pandemic is the next pandemic 
is what is setting out there in the ocean that we can't get. And unfortunately, they're not going to get this stuff all cleared up in any time soon. And starting January 1st, don't forget, folks, all the big CEOs of all the big companies have already announced, guess what? You're going to pay even more than what you're paying now. So I would advise yourselves to start stocking up on all goods that you need on a daily basis while you can afford them. Because there could be a day coming that you're not going to be able to afford those certain goods anymore. I'll give you a quick example. I use subscribe and save on Amazon, and I'm so glad that I did. Paper towels. I'm locked in at a price. Now I get eight rolls, right? Yeah, it's eight rolls that equal 24 of paper towels. So it's the mega rolls. I'm locked in at 20 bucks. I get a shipment of those once a month. May bump that up a little bit just to make sure I can still get them. But I pay 20 bucks. Amazon now is selling them for $35.44. Walmart's selling them for $32.98. I'm locked in at that 20 bucks. Sometimes using that subscribe and save can save you some money. So that's something you may want to think about while you're doing your prepping and stuff. If there's stuff that you use on a daily basis and you can go on and you can lock in that price with that subscribe and save, could be very beneficial to you if it's something that you go through a lot of. Maybe you have a baby. Maybe you need to do that with diapers and wipes. Lock into a price. Problem is, with the diapers, as they grow, the diapers change. And every time you change the size or you change anything, you go to the higher price. But in the meantime, you could still lock in at those certain prices if you know that your child is going to be, you know, in that area probably for a month or two. Might save you a little bit of money at that point in time and then have to take it from there. But you're always going to need wipes. Always going to need wipes. So I definitely go on and lock in on that price. You're always going to need toilet paper. I do the same with the toilet paper. I'm locked in on a price on that. So I'm locked in on a lot of different prices because all the other prices have just rose. And I can sit here and list them off left and right to you. But I just wanted to give you an example with the paper towels. I'm saving 15 bucks right off the top on Amazon. So, hey, you got to do what you got to do. You got to save money where you can save money. Remember the real pandemic, the next real pandemic that's coming is here and it's called shortages. So be prepared. Do yourself a favor. Make sure that you and your family are prepared. Till next time, folks, you all thrive to survive. Stay prepping. Keep your head above water. Look for the deals. And don't believe anything that you see where they're telling you they're going to get this all solved in just a short matter of time. Because it ain't going to happen. Shortages and inflation are here. And they're going to get worse before they get better. So until next time, folks. I'll catch all of you on the flip side. Ho, ho, ho.